So we're going to do a um, <clears throat> quick little visu visualization before I get into things. So I want everybody to go back in the, uh, wherever they were, whatever show they were at, and when you had your biggest order at the booth. Um, and for this talk purposes, we'll, you know, residential orders. Um, so think about your biggest order. So um, raise your hand if you had an order over 3K. <clears throat> Just keep it there. Let me keep going. So 4K. Five, six, I'll jump up to, to eight, about nine, 10, 12, 15, got a few left, 17, damn, 18, 19, all right, over 20. So, so yeah. Oh, there's one up here too. So yeah. So for me, there's there's a lot of reasons to love this job. You know, the the flexibility, right? Create your own schedule. The the being a business owner. You know, having something that you create that's yours that you can build for your family for for generations. Um, the the travel. Those of you that know me, I love to travel. Literally, like four days ago, I was in Kuwait. Um, so I'm all I'm all over the place. Um, the friends, some of my closest friends and mentors are from Cutco. Um, my, my work wife is in this room. Um, not my real wife, my work wife, just clarity. Um, and it's crazy, actually most of my groomsmen at my wedding last year are in this room right now. So um, yeah, the relationships. But for me, the thing that really like, gets me excited are you know, looking forward to the next show the next day is having these big orders, right? So, you know, it's like an adrenaline rush. It's why, you know, it's why we do it. Um, so I'm always thinking like, cool, I had that kitchen. Like, how can I do that again? Or how can I have an even bigger order? Um, you know, my biggest order right now is, I think it's like 12. I had a couple there and it's like that threshold that I haven't been able to, to quite cross yet. So I'm already thinking like, oh, like how can I beat that? And um, I know there's that new um, Cutco Complete Collection coming out for those of you that don't know, Fast Action's working on and I'm already excited to start selling those. So. Um, I remember looking back at my first 500K year, 2019, and I was like, man, that was awesome. Sold a lot of knives, half a million dollars. Um, that was the year I won Silver Cup, and I remember sitting back and being like, man, I like worked my butt off. It was a lot of work. So I was like, how can I do better uh, going forward without sacrificing, you know, burning myself out, sacrificing relationships, and, um, and like my free time? And I came to the realization that you know, I might not have the biggest month in the company or the biggest year, um, you know, opportunity to work some of these biggest events in the company. And, um, and that's okay. I was okay with that. You know, these are things that I don't, don't really have much control over. The one thing I do have control over, though, is maximizing the customer in front of me. Um, so that, my mission then became to have one of the top average orders. Um, you know, I wanted to be at least have number one in that. So I began to shift my focus on what I needed to do and how can I achieve that. So I had these mini goals of like, you know, no excuses, no matter where I want to have a thousand dollar average at any show I work, um, no matter where I work, who I'm working with, I always want to have the top average, uh, booth average. Um, so the answer to me, it was like, you know, I'd already sold a bunch of ultimates um, and it wasn't enough. So for me, it was like, well, I need to sell more bundles and ultimately more kitchens. Um, you know, I've had up to this point, I had two to three throughout my career and you know, it was just kind of like random luck of the draw. You know, it wasn't like systemized, um, right place, right time situation. So I kind of like shifted my focus of how I approach every interaction at the booth. I used to be like most of us maybe still are of like, hey, I'm going to do a really good demo and I'm going to sell this couple some knives. And, you know, if it goes well, they'll buy a block set. Um, and if they really like me, you know, they look like money or you know, she's got a big Louis, you know, I'm going to try to bundle something and it's gonna be awesome. So, you know, we always naturally default to knives first because it's what we're taught day one, sample kits. Um, you know, it's what we're comfortable with and, you know, it is the most profitable part of the business. So, you know, we all default to knives. Now my approach is, is I'm gonna go in and do an amazing full kitchen demo and I'm just gonna go for the home run every time. You know, close the full kitchen. If that doesn't work, it's out of the budget, doesn't make sense for them, they're hopefully gonna bundle two packages. And if that fails, they're at least going to buy a full knife set or cookware set. You know, now I'm really focused and honed in on like how many of those three to five K orders can I have in a day? Because um, those can change a day real quick. So 
this talk's not gonna be me really diving super deep into all like the technical things like exact scripts, verbiages, but rather just kind of give you guys some of the tips and general concept and mindsets and kind of framework. Because at the end of the day, people don't buy kitchens because you sold them really hard on the salmon knife and the cheese knife and like the one quart saucepan and barbecue tools, right? They buy it because of the concept of them having the forever kitchen remodel that goes with them no matter where they live in the world. Um, and one day it will be handed down to their kids, right? So it's the concept of what it is. Um, so there's three main tips that I'm going to give you guys, and hopefully, um, three tips that help me, and hopefully will help you guys get started on this journey of doubling and hopefully tripling your averages. Um, you know, I could give you all the tips and exact wording that I do, take really long, um, you know, how I frame my demo, but the best way to get started with um, growing your averages and selling more kitchens and bundles, in my opinion, kind of starts with these three tips, and then just time and experience and practice. So here's the thing, and I'll pre-frame with this, you know, you're not going to magically start you know, leave here and start selling, you know, kitchens overnight. I definitely didn't. Um, you know, it comes with practice and patience and, you know, going through some of these failures. Uh, it's something that, you know, Liz and I, we work with our mentees every year. It's like, that's the eventual goal for everybody that works with us. It's like, we want you um, to have, kind of like have a system in place for it. And, you know, they, they always funny. It's like two months in, they're always like, oh, cool. Like, how do we sell kitchens? Like, that's what we want to learn. And it's like, we have to tell them, like, chill out. Like, it's a process. It's not something that happens overnight. And, you know, you're going to fail a bunch, and that's okay. You're going to have, um, you know, cancel orders, big cancel orders, and that's okay. You guys know what's worse than one canceled kitchen at an event? Two canceled kitchens at that same event. That hurts, right? Um, so, in my opinion, you haven't really, like, earned the, uh, the like, your cut coach stripes until you see that, like, negative 8,600 in your commission statement, right? It hurts. Um, you know, get it out of the way, because it's going to happen eventually. So, um, one thing before we dive in, just kind of wanted to address. Uh, I want everyone to go into this with an open mind and throw away any kind of, like, preconceived notions you have of, you know, maybe in the back of your mind of what it takes to, like, have these high averages and selling kitchens and have these big orders that maybe, you know, only certain events have it or certain programs or certain parts of the U.S., um, you know, well, you know, they've got the State Fair of Texas, they have LA County and international and federal and all this stuff. It's like, you're never, you know, if you believe that, you're never going to raise your averages. And the reason I say that is because that was me for so many years and it kind of kept me in that same level for so long. Now, I can promise you that out of all my kitchens and bundles, not one of them came up with their Amex Platinum and like threw it at me and was like, all right, I'll take all of it, right? Um, it's like, it's your job to do the demo the right way and sell them on it. So. So here's my three tips. Um, <clears throat> tip number one is become a master of everything we make. And I have master in like all caps. So I know I kind of touched this a little bit. Knives obviously are the easiest things for sell. We always lean towards selling knives, knife sets. But I'll challenge you to become a master of the big sets. Um, you know, sell more ultimates. Anyone who cooks a couple times a week, um, if they have a family, if they grill a barbecue, if they have people that come over to their house, for, you know, whatever, like, there's no reason why they don't have an ultimate. It's like, it's like a no-brainer. You know, bare minimum a signature, but, you know, sell more ultimates, become more comfortable with those. Um, second thing is, you know, we sell some of the best cooker out there, and you have to really believe that. It really drives me crazy when you hear reps complain about, like, well, like, I just, I don't sell cookware because, you know, it's, it, I don't get paid as much, obviously, so, like, it's not worth my time. Or they're like, oh, well, like, everything burns and sticks, so, like, they're just going to return it. It's, it's not worth the effort. I'm like, no, little Jimmy New Rep, like, you don't sell cookware because you don't know how to sell it. You don't like it. You don't use it. Like, you don't understand how truly amazing it is. Um, you know, we're always going to, like, selling, you know, creating these stories in our head of why we can't do something. Uh, and then we just start to believe it, and I see this all the time with cookware. So, um, you know, I'll challenge you to, you know, become a student. Don't be, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, humble yourself a little bit and learn how to sell the cookware. You know, how many times have you been to a show when you have people walk up, they're like, oh, like, this looks like my grandparents' stuff that they got when they got married, and they're still using it, or they're like, yeah, like, we have it now, now we're using it. Like, that's insane that they still have that. So, you know, I always tell everybody, like, our, our cookware is better than our knives, and I truly believe that. So, again, you know, humble yourself, become a student, Learn the cookware. Reach out to others um, who are selling a lot of cookware. This, this last year, I sold more cookware in last year than I did like my entire career, and it was because like I realized like I wasn't doing it. So I reached out to people that were like Kareem and Seth and Bert, like these guys that are selling a lot of cookware, and you know I humbled myself and just told myself that I wasn't good at it, so I became good at it. Um, you know, it's if, if you realize really like at shows how much money people spend on waterless cookware. 
Um, you know, nothing's worse than when you have customer come up and be like, oh, like you guys make cookware? Like we just bought like 10 grand worth of stuff. Or like when it's a past customer, it's even worse. So they're like, oh, like, yeah, we love our knives and it's great. And they're like, oh, I didn't know you had cookware. Like we bought some, you know, the, earlier this year, it was like 10 grand, it was so much money. You're like, are you kidding me? Could have sold you your kitchen this whole time. Um, so it's like, people spend a lot of money on this. Um, so learn how to sell cookware. The flatware is amazing. I know a lot of you guys sell a lot of flatware, some of you don't. I used to tell myself the story with the flatware of like, well, like knives, you can create a need and like pain points and like provide solutions of why they need knives, but you can't really do that with spoons and forks because they either need it or they don't. Um, and then again, I realized like how awesome our, our uh, flatware is. Like it's literally the only, one of the last USA made spoons and forks, 100% dishwasher proof, um, doesn't rust or tarnish. You don't, you don't have to sit there and polish it. It's warrantied forever, just like everything else. Somebody in our house, last year, dropped a little spoon in our disposal, won't name names, uh, wasn't me though, and just just destroyed it. Like, it was like really bad. What did we do? Put it in a box, sent it to Cutco, we got a brand new spoon in two weeks. Like, that is insane that you can do that with spoons and forks. And I feel like more people just need to realize how great our flatware is. Um, the last kind of package is the gadgets and accessories. I feel like this is like the forgotten package. These are all amazing because if you realize how many how much time and effort and energy people put in in replacing stuff and buying crap over and over again and like the new gizmo that's supposed to be super easy to use. Um, you know, like I, last week I had one of my kitchens, like the guy was like, wait, so you're telling me this can opener is forever? I was like, yeah, literally everything forever. He's like, I just bought six can openers because I'm tired of breaking them and I'm tired of going to the store. So I just went and bought six and like just gonna throw them away. And like, that's just insane to think about. Like, they won't buy any more can openers, cutting boards, like nothing, like it's forever. So plug the gadget pack, you know, in your, in your demo. So I realize this is super elementary for a lot of you. And I say this because you can't sell all of it if you're weak in one part of the kitchen or in the bundle. So become a master of everything and make it a goal to be top 20 in, you know, in all the stuff. I know if you guys follow Mike on social media, I don't know where he is, but he, uh, he's always posting the things of like, oh, here's the top 20 for this and this. And it's like, make it a goal to be top 20 this year in all those categories, because that's how you start. Um, so that's tip number one. Tip number two, shift the idea of us being a knife company to a kitchen company. I first got this idea from Kareem a couple years ago. So there's, you know, tweak your demo to, to reflect this. Um, again, I'm, I won't dive too deep into verbiages. You know, I'll save some of that for round tables. I know we have that later. Um, but for example, you know, when people say, oh, have you ever heard of Cutco? Yeah, Cutco's an American knife company, been around since 1949. You know, something like along those lines. You know, a small tweak of like, hey, are you familiar with Cutco? Cutco's an American kitchen company. What's cool is our cookware has actually been around for over 100 years. And then we got famous for our knives in the 40s. Now we make one of the last American made spoons and forks. We also make a variety of kitchen gadgets. So people know us as a knife company, but now we're almost like a mini kitchen remodel company. And it's like right off the bat, that power intro, it's like, oh, they do all kinds of stuff. Um, so little things like that. The other thing is like, how does your booth look? You know, does, you know, I have plenty of examples on my phone. If you guys want to see, I'll show you some examples of kind of how I set mine up. But like, is your, you know, is your booth three boards with like every single knife we make and like a rack with like all the sets and like a flatware chest down here and like cookware on the back or like, a two cord in front of you? Or is it like they walk up and they, they see everything like ultimate cookware, flour, like all right on the front table, right? Um, the other thing is make sure you do the same demo. I know we've, I've heard this preach already a bunch of times. Same demo with every person every time. You know, I know Bert actually the other day said the quote in the, in the book, and this is a variation of that, but, you know, we don't rise to the occasion, we fall to our standard. So it's like, what is your standard for yourself at the booth? Um, I'll tell a quick story, because it's cool. I, every couple, couple times a year, I get something like this that happens that kind of keeps me in check. Um, I had just gotten back from a, a base, and, you know, it was a good week, had you know, one or two kitchens, and I remember it came back, a small home show in Kentucky, and I was like, cool, like, ready to kind of keep, keep it going. Um, Friday morning, it was my turn old lady walks up, she's like, oh, Cutco, I've heard of this. Like, can I just buy a paring knife for like a couple knives? I'm like, sure, yeah, I guess you can. And like, as that's happening, another like young money looking couple walks up and like, oh, Cutco, like we've been wanting this for years. We're ready to buy a set. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
Uh, so the guy I'm working with like starts doing that. I'm like, could have very easily just been like, yeah, whatever, like taken it and gotten annoyed. And I was like, took a step back. I was like, hey, same demo, every person, every time. Long story short, we're working through it. Ends up being Galley, then an ultimate, and then she basically tells me that, oh, well, actually, my house burned down last week. She has like a log house. Showed me pictures on her phone from the day before. It's literally still smoldering over a week later. And she's like, yeah, the insurance gave us money. And like, I actually have nothing. So I actually would need everything. That turned into from a paring knife to a full kitchen, paid in full, because it was insurance money. And it's one of those things because, again, that keeps me in check because it's like, I could have very easily gotten annoyed that the guy who, by the way, sold a galley. So I think it, it turned out pretty well for me. Um, so, like, I could have very easily just, um, you know, taken that and got annoyed with it. But again, I stuck to my standards of doing the same demo with every person every time. And it's not fair to you or to the customer that you're not giving every single person the full experience of what Cutco is. So again, all of this goes back to treating us like a kitchen company, not a knife company that sells other stuff. Um, so tip number three is, it's kind of a short one, but it's just as important, is have an unshakable and almost irrational confidence in when you're presenting these big orders and pricing and packages. So you can't be scared of the kitchen or just closing big orders um, because customers are like sharks and they can sense any drop of doubt or skepticism in your voice or in your body language, or your expressions or whatever. They can sense that even if you don't know you're doing it. So if, if you're working shows, you know, take a step back and kind of um, to like, and take a step back of like what's happening at these shows. So people walk into a show, there's, you know, hundreds of vendors, they're walking down every aisle, they're getting attacked by everybody, everybody's trying to sell them something, sign them up for something, whatever, right? Then they walk up to Cutco. Um, these are, you know, strangers you just met 15 minutes ago, and now you're asking them to spend 12, 13 grand with you, right? So it's, you know, they're hard earned money, and it's your job to make sure that they spend that with confidence um, with you. So I've gotten to the point now where it's, you know, again, kind of like what Curtis was saying. It's, you know, I'm extremely confident with the, the kitchen price and we'll always give the same reaction to, to everybody. And it's funny, you'll get like the, the hecklers that come up, they're like, oh my God, 13 grand, are you kidding me? Like, I could buy a car for that. And like, yeah, you can. I mean, enjoy your early 2000s Mazda 3 that like will fall apart in a couple of years. Um, or you get the people that are like, wow, people spend this much? Like they're genuinely curious. And it's like having that bulletproof confidence and like being able to respond like, yeah, you know, you can. You know, people spend this kind of money, 20, 30 grand on cabinets and countertops and remodels all the time. It doesn't even do anything for you, it just looks pretty. And then you move in a couple years and then you gotta do it all over again. At least with this, it's something that goes with you no matter where you live. And it's like having that response. Um, and then it's funny, what happens is you give a response like that and then they end up like, oh, really? So you're telling me like the spoon's forever? And like they start, and then they like turns into a sale. Um, so again, having that, having that um, confidence when presenting it. So it's, these three go hand in hand because if you're not a master in all parts of the kitchen and you don't tweak your demo to reflect that we are a kitchen company, uh, you can't have this confidence when it comes to the pricing and the closing. So they all go together hand in hand. Um, so I'll kind of, uh, kind of wind things down by saying this. You know, I, I know it's, it's easy up here, you know, super confident when talking about it. Make it seem like it is easy and you know, everybody buys it, it's just natural and you know, Reality is, is no, not everybody buys a kitchen, and that's fine. But what is, what is cool is when you show more kitchens, you're naturally gonna sell more big sets and bundles, and that's still a win. And you'll pop a kitchen every now and then, and it's like a snowball effect. It's like you build that confidence of like you sell one, two, and like I remember I worked an event with, uh, with Seth, and setting up, boom, sold a kitchen. I'm like, cool, that was fun. Sold another kitchen. I was like, all right, what's happening? And then by the end, I'm like, yeah, everybody buys this. Like, this is the most popular set, and he's like, Okay, cool, I'll buy it. And he bought you know, three kitchens in one day. I was like, what is happening? So you start to build that confidence of like, oh, this is what people do. Everybody does this, um, even if they don't. So, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm not closing a kitchen to everybody, but I can promise you that more than half of my clients are sold on the idea of the kitchen, and they will have it at some point in the next couple of years. Um, you know, this is the best part because you're planting seeds. There's no more guessing with past customers at shows. You know, they walk up, they're like, oh, like, yeah, we bought a set from you. 
you know, what's, what do you have, what's new? And it's like playing this like guessing game of like, oh, well, have you seen this? And like, cool, yeah, no, we're good, we don't need anything. Versus like, yeah, you guys got the set, you guys love it, cool. So what's next, the cookware, the flatware, or both? And it's like, yeah, oh yeah, we talked about that last time. So it's like so easy to, to get that future business. Um, <clears throat> so just basically to summarize, if you wanna have these massive jumps in your averages, you need to consistently show and close more of these bundles in these kitchens, and it starts with basically with these three tips: is becoming a master in all parts of the kitchens. You know, sell the big sets, sell more cookware, sell more flatware. You know, don't forget about the gadgets. Um, start tweaking your demo to revolve around us being a full kitchen company, not just a knife company that sells other stuff too. And lastly, build that bulletproof, irrational confidence when talking about the kitchen and the pricing. And just lastly, remember, the best part of this is you can do this anywhere in the US at any of your events. You know, the job becomes a lot more fun and exciting when you're at a place in your business where you can show up to a booth, show up to a shift, and you fully expect every single interaction to be a $1,000 plus income interaction, right? That's when start, things start to get fun. So yeah, I guess the rest of the, this year, let's all go out and sell more bundles and kitchens than we ever have as a company. I'm curious to see how many more kitchens we all sell together. Thanks. Thank you.